From Hollywood, the Phil Harris Dallas Bay Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Scharf and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> With food prices as high as they are, most housewives are faced with a shortage in their household money. As we look in the Harris home, Alice is discussing the problem with Phil. Phil, will you please listen to me? You don't even know what I said. Huh? What? What'd you say again? Oh. Oh, I know. You said that you were, um... No, no, you... no, no. I, I said I'm having trouble with my budget. I've tried every way, but I just can't reduce my expenditures. So what? Uh... A lot of women have big hips. <laughs> what if you do waddle a little when you walk? It's hard. That's cute. I'm talking about my food budget. Prices are so high. I need more money for my household expenses. Now, prices aren't high. You can go into any market and get butter for 22 cents a pound. <laughs> and eggs are... Eggs are 24 cents a dozen. Bread is 5 cents a loaf. And coffee is 25 cents a pound. When's the last time you went shopping, Wendell? <laughs> My mother used to send me to the store all the time when I was 12 years old. Oh, no wonder. Everything was cheaper in the gay 90s. <laughs> Do you know that today butter is about, about 79 cents a pound, eggs are 60 cents a dozen, bread is 23 cents a loaf, and... Yummy yogurt is 34 cents a pint? <laughs> Yummy raised his yogurt that much? <laughs> he can't do that. What are the boys in my band going to take their baths in? <laughs> that isn't all, Philip. Prices on everything have gone up, including the basic essentials. Why, do you know that last week the price got so high, I had to give up snuff? <laughs> Oh, poor Willie. You are indeed a hardship case. Don't, don't laugh, Philip. I miss my snuff. <laughs> now I have nothing to sniff. Have you ever tried chloroform? <laughs> Alice, the trouble with you is that, well, you don't know how to shop. Well, if you think you can do better, I'll give you the budget money and you go out and buy the food for the week. Okay. But remember, you won't eat anything but the best steaks and rib roasts and chops. And I'll get all of that. Just give me some money. All right. How much do you want? Well, now, let me see. Four people for a week, three meals a day. Give me $10. <laughs> $10? Don't worry. I'll bring back the change. <laughs> going to buy a week's supply of food for less than ten dollars? Yeah. I've been using snuff. What have you been on, Clyde? <laughs> it's doing pretty good for you. I might start on snuff. I don't know. <laughs> no, William, uh, uh, women always think they're so smart. They don't know what they're doing half of the time. The only time I didn't know what I was doing was when I married you. <laughs> oh, yeah? What an ad lib! <laughs> well, now you're just ridiculing my dialogue. Well, I don't have to stand here and be the target of your cruel barbs. I'm going up to my room and pop. <laughs> I may even sob a little. <laughs> I don't care what you do. If you want to sob, go ahead and sob because I'm getting tired please, of listening please, to this. Please, please, please don't fight. <laughs> I can't stand these family altercations. Well, don't tell us what to do. If I want to fight... Wait a minute, that's the bell. I'll get that. Hiya, Curly. Oh, hello, Remley. What's the matter with you? Alice and me just had an alteration. <laughs> <laughs> You mean you had your faces lifted again? No. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, Alice and me had a little beef. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed it. I love a good fist fight. We didn't use our fists. 
Bowie knives? Look, Frank, <laughs> would you please You ought to be ashamed of yourself fighting with your wife, biting the hand that feeds you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bite her either. I didn't say you bit her either. I said you bit her hand. <laughs> Now tell me, what was this bloody brawl all about? All right, Remley, all right. She wanted to have more money for the house, and I wouldn't give it to her. How much she want? Well, she says it costs her more than $35 a week just for food. Oh, that blonde babe's trying to take you. <laughs> $35 just for food? That's ridiculous. I better straighten her out. I'll talk to her and... Hello, Frankie. She's here, Remley. Start talking. Alice... How much does Curly give you a week for food? $35. A cheapskate. <laughs> Curly, you ought to be ashamed of yourself starving this little girl. Tilt! <laughs> Emily, what are you trying to do? First you agree with me, then you agree with her. Whose side do you want? Nobody's side. I'm just trying to start something. All right. <laughs> Now, be serious a minute, Frank. Don't you think that $35 a week is too much money for food? Yes, it is. But don't blame Alice, Curly. <coughs> After all, she has to shop in this neighborhood, and it's very expensive. Why don't you come down to my neighborhood? <laughs> no, thanks. I'm not in the mood to be rolled today. <laughs> Curly, please, there's nothing wrong with my neighborhood. I'm proud to be a resident of Skid Row Heights. <laughs> You do your marketing in my section, you can eat for one-fifth the price. Of course, you may not live as long, but say like that. <laughs> That's what I say. Sure. I keep saying it. The market that Alice has been shopping in is much too expensive. Curly, why don't you come with me? I know a market where I do my shopping and you can get a week's supply of food for $5. Well, then lead me to it. Oh, this I gotta see. I'm going along with you boys That's if you don't mind No, no, no Come on along, come along And watch me And you might learn something About shopping Okay And if you listen to me You might learn something too About what? About singing <laughs> I know at times It's tough to get into a song But this is ridiculous <laughs> Smell blossoms and the trees are bare All day long I seem to walk on air I wonder why, I wonder why I keep tossing in my sleep at night And what's more I've lost my appetite Stars that used to twinkle in the skies Are twinkling in my eyes I wonder why You don't need analyzing It is not so surprising That you feel very strange but nice Your heart goes pitter-patter We know just what's the matter because we've been there once or twice Put your head on our shoulder You need someone who's older A rub down with a velvet glove There is nothing you can take To relieve that pleasant thing You're not sick, you're just in love You don't I need sing no one there so I smell blossoms strange, And the trees nice. are bare Your All day long I seem to walk I on air I wonder why because we've been there I wonder why Put your I keep tossing on in my sleep at night And what's more I lost my love. appetite there is Are nothing that you can take to in the skies or twinkling in you're my eyes. You're just I wonder in why. We're just, we're just in love.
Well, here's where I live, Curly. <laughs> I love the dear hearts and gentle people who live in your hometown. <laughs> Hey, Remley, what kind of a neighborhood is this? What's the matter with it? Well, I just parked my car and already all four tires are gone. <laughs> oh, there must be some mistake. You sure you had tires when you drove down here? <laughs> Certainly I had tires. What a place. It isn't even safe to walk around this neighborhood. Walking's all right. I've been walking around here for years and nothing ever happened to... What's the matter? Somebody stole my shoes. <laughs> You weren't wearing any Frankie, hmm? where is this market of yours? It's right here Oh yeah, honey, there it is Right there, look at the sign oh, yeah. Joe's Supermarket Imported Delicacies and Reclaim Food Emporium <laughs> <laughs> Reclaim Food? They have some army surplus stuff I must admit it's a nice looking market You've been shopping here long? Oh yeah I've been buying all my food here for the past three years Hey, look Hmm? I see they have a liquor department uh, <laughs> Right near the entrance <laughs> They have? Funny, I never noticed it before <laughs> I had no occasion yeah, to Hello, no, Mr. You... Remley <laughs> oh. Hiya, Joe Have you come in to buy the usual food for your dinner? Yeah, huh? And what'll you have tonight? Bird's eye bourbon or Minute Maid scar? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, please, Joe My friends here would like to buy some of your food And I'm going to show them your food department Are you kidding? You wouldn't know the food department if you <laughs> fell over it <laughs> Hey, look, uh, Joe Remley tells me that you have some great food here Ooh, have I? <laughs> <laughs> Why, some of our food is good enough to eat And our prices are the lowest in town Well, that's just dandy Look, uh, how about your meats? Uh, how much do you get per pound for the best cut steaks? Fifty cents. Fifty cents? I pay a dollar seventy. You see, you see, you see. I told you you didn't know how to shop. Look, Joe, I'll take ten pounds of that. In ten pounds of what? That best cut steak for fifty cents a pound. Oh, I haven't had that for twelve years. <laughs> But I've got some second cut steak I can let you have that Okay, how much is it? A dollar seventy a pound <laughs> How come the second cut costs more than the first cut? Because the second cut I got <laughs> Yeah, but look, you got a lot of nerve charging a dollar seventy for steak Well, I can't help it if prices are high They keep going up every minute I know, but a dollar seventy A dollar eighty <laughs> You didn't even wait a minute for that one <laughs> A dollar eighty is... A dollar ninety. A dollar eighty is a dollar ninety. Whoops, there it goes to two dollars. Now, <laughs> now, look, Joe, you can't keep charging more. It's against the law. The prices have been frozen. Well, I got a hot cash register. It thaws them out. <laughs> look, the prices are too high. I want to see something cheaper. Well, why didn't you say so? I've got just what you want. Is step over to the condemned meat department. That... <laughs> I've heard enough. Let's get out of here. Come on, Frank. I can't... Do well, Phil, I hope you're satisfied. Do you admit you can't do better? No, and I'm not giving up yet. Well, I am. You'll never get it any cheaper any place. I'm going back to my market and do the shopping. See you at home, boys. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Fine, thanks. Look, Remley, there must be some place where I can buy meat cheaper because you can't... Hey, wait a minute. Hmm? Hey... Why don't I buy it wholesale? There's only one trouble, Curly. A wholesaler won't sell it to you unless you buy a lot. To the average person, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I just happen to be a big shot. They'll sell me whatever I ask for. Now, come on, we'll go over to a wholesale house and get a few things that I want, just, just, well, just enough meat to last a week. Come on. <laughs> Now, you see, Remley, <laughs> I told you I could get it wholesale. If you know how to handle people, you can get anything you want. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me something, Curly. What are you going to do with two tons of ground round? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
it'll go pretty fast the way Alice eats. <laughs> you see, uh, Remley, nothing is wasted in my house. Alice will eat as much as she can, and the rest she'll use to uh, stuff the sofa. <laughs> I never saw so much hamburger. Well, it's not so much. It's only one truckload. <laughs> yeah, but how about the other truckload? <laughs> The one that has the 400 pounds of steak, 600 pounds of ham hocks, 800 pounds of liver, and three miles of Lynx sausage. <laughs> Curly, where are you gonna keep all that meat? We got a big cedar closet at home. <laughs> you can't keep it in a closet. You have to get one of those big walk-in freezers like they have in butcher shops. Yeah, I understand that, but aren't they very expensive? Not if you know where to get one. <laughs> I happen to know a guy. No. <laughs> but the friend of yours, forget about him. I ain't buying no hot freezer. But Curly. Nine. <laughs> now look, we'll go look at the classified phone book and find where they sell commercial freezers. This time I'm going to a legitimate dealer, if you don't mind. All right, okay. Have it your own way. This will show Alice that I can do a lot of things better than she can. I know how to shop, I know how to drive a bargain, and I know how to sing baritone. You think I'm gonna ask you why you mentioned that last one? You're crazy. <laughs> ask or not, I shall proceed to show you. Music, please. <laughs> Possibilities, possibilities We're living in a world that's full of possibilities Ain't no miracle too impossible For anyone who sees the possibilities If you recall your history Then you will find that all its famous men Turned out to be the kind of men Who never stopped to look behind They looked ahead to see what they could see And they saw possibilities, possibilities They never overlooked a single possibility Proven naturally Opportunity is for the one Who sees the possibilities Each time you try to solve A new phenomenon The skeptics say it's just a dream I know But after you're a hero And the job is done Then you can tell them all I told you so Yes, there are possibilities Possibilities If you will only make the most of your facilities Folks will idolize, even eulogize The little guy that sees the possibilities When Christopher Columbus proved the world was round He met Queen Isabel on his return she said, now tell me, Chris, about this place you found. He said, well, Bell, as far as I'm concerned, it's sure got possibilities, possibilities. I tell you, Queen, I've never seen such possibilities. And I really feel you should make a deal before somebody sees its possibilities. When little Abe was growing up in Illinois, to be a big success was his intent. He studied so much harder than the other boys. Till one day he became their president He saw the possibilities, possibilities He always made the most of his facilities Proven naturally, opportunity is for the one who sees the possibilities I guess by now, there ain't no doubt About the point I'm bringing out So if you'll open up your eyes you are bound to recognize the possibilities, possibilities. We're living in a world that's full of possibilities. Ain't no miracle too impossible for anyone who sees the possibilities. Well. Here we are, Remley. The Wages and Prices Freezer Company. <laughs> hey, Curly. Are you sure this is the same place that was advertised in the classified phone book? Yeah, yeah, they had a great big ad. Yeah. Some guy by the name of Harry had it in there. I don't know, but it says, uh, uh, I really hope that I can get all I want here because, look, Remley, I need a big, roomy walk-in freezer. You've come to the right place, Harry. Grove! <laughs> Incident. This is the guy I was going to take you to, Curly. Hey, Remley, did you slip me a loaded telephone book? <laughs> hey, Grogan, now what are you doing here? I own the joint. I took it over from the guy who used to own it. Oh, well, I'm glad that you finally got into an honest business. 
You acquired this place uh, legitimately, of course. Well, naturally, naturally. <laughs> I made a very shrewd deal. I got the place for practically nothing. What'd you give the guy? 24 hours to get out of town. <laughs> You ought to be ashamed of yourself, scaring the man into giving you his business. I didn't scare him. I was a perfect gentleman. Walked in at the man's office. I said, I'd like to have your business. So he said, take. <laughs> and then you put on your gun and signed the contract, huh? Please, Harris, you know that it's against the law to carry a gun. Being a law-abiding citizen, I wouldn't have one on me. Well, then how come this guy gave you his business for nothing? He was sensitive. <laughs> Couldn't stand those hot cigarette butts against his bare feet. <laughs> now then, Harris, just what is it that you want? I want to go to another place. <laughs> oh, Curly, you're too squeamish. Let's look at some of Grogan's freezers. Maybe he has some good merchandise. How could he? A guy like Grogan don't know nothing about no freezers. <laughs> Get him. Don't know nothing about freezers. <laughs> Says I don't know nothing about freezers. <laughs> Me, who spent time in some of the best coolers in the country. <laughs> now, do you want to look at a freezer or don't you? All right. As long as we're here, we might as well see what you got. Hey, but Grogan, remember, I want the latest model made. Well, that's all I carry. For example, just look at this machine here. Now, this is the newest thing on the market. This is self-defrosting. It's in perfect condition, and I defy you to find a flaw on that refrigerator. It hasn't got a door on it. That's how it defrosts itself. <laughs> What's the matter with this guy, Remley? He's stupid or something? All right, Grogan. Look, I don't think that... You, you haven't got what I want. I'm going to leave and see if I can... Stay where you are. What do you think this is, Saks Fifth Avenue, where you can walk out without buying something? <laughs> <laughs> you came in to buy a freezer, you ain't leaving till you get one. Did you ever work for a used car lot? <laughs> Look, Brogan, I'll buy a freezer if I see what I want, but I want a modern one. And if it's not asking too much, can I please have one with a door? Well, I got just what you were looking for Because here is a freezer That is the very latest thing in refrigeration Just look at the lines on that box Just look at them solid doors That looks good to me, Curly How cold does this freezer get, Grogan? Depends how many pounds of ice you put in <laughs> <laughs> well, Don't you see, Remley? That's an old-fashioned box I want a modern freezer, Grogan A big one that you walk into Well, why don't you say so? How about that one over there? Where? Oh, well, then, now you're talking. That's just what I've been looking for. Are you sure it's the latest thing? Well, of course, yeah, certainly. It's got the newest deep freeze units, got separate food compartments, got a light in it that goes on when you open a door. Watch out, whites. Hey. Hey, that light works good. Yeah. Don't you? <laughs> hey, Grogan, I like the looks of this machine. Uh, uh, can I take it home on trial? Yeah, sure. Go on. Take it home, try it. If you don't like it, try and return it. <laughs> That's fair enough. Look, I'll buy it, Grogue, but look, I want it sent over to my house as soon as possible. It'll be there before you get home. All right, thanks, Grogue. Come on, Remley. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, all right. Hey, that's a good machine. I could tell by the way that light went on when he opened the door. Did you see it go on? Hey, Max. What? The sucker bought the machine. You can blow out the candle in there now. <laughs> Hey, Ram, huh? you suppose they delivered those two truckloads of meat yet? We'll find out as soon as we get in your house. Yeah. I bet Alice will be surprised when Bill she finds... Bill Harris, what have you done now? The meat's been delivered, Curly. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right, Alice? Did the boy bring the meat I bought? Boy? It took eight men four hours to unload it. Oh? Huh? Where you got the meat? Is it in the kitchen? In the kitchen, the living room, two bedrooms, the bathroom, the closet, the... Cell, all the right, attic. all right. You're exaggerating. I am, huh? 
I had to call somebody over here to help me stack it. Who'd you call? I'll give you three guesses, Mac. <laughs> hey, Julius. Hey, Julius, where are you, kid? Right here behind this pile of loose liver. <laughs> you buy all this meat? Have you gone crazy? What do you mean crazy? A guy buys a measly 5,000 pounds of meat and right away there's something wrong with him. Oh, you and Frankie do the darndest things. Now, where are you going to keep all this all meat? All right, all right, just calm down. I've thought of that. I bought a big walk-in freezer and it's being delivered today. Is that what that big cabinet is that just came? Gee, I'm disappointed. Why? I thought it was a gas chamber for you and Mr. Remley. <laughs> Well, as long as you bought a freezer, start putting the meat in it. And do it fast. I'm going up. All right, honey, all right, we'll do it. Come on, Remley, let's get busy. No, wait a minute, Curly. Before we do anything, we'd better test the freezer and see if it's working properly. Otherwise, the meat will spoil. I know that, I know that. But we have to put some meat in there to see if it's working, right? I know. But, uh, why waste good meat when we got Julius? <laughs> <laughs> let's put him in first. Yeah. <laughs> if it ain't working, we got nothing to lose. <laughs> He's half spoiled anyway. <laughs> ain't gonna work. How are we gonna get him in? There, you leave it in me, what? Oh, Julius! What is it, Mr. Remley? I want you to do something for me. You can save your breath. I overheard your whole crummy plan. <laughs> You're going in there anyway. Grab him, Frankie. Yeah. Throw him in that freezer. Let Come on, kid. Wife. Come on in there. Get in there. All right. Shove him in there. Shove him. Right. There, he's in there. Uh, now, you put the plug in, Remley, while I put the control on. Plug's in, Curly. Now, let me see. The control says low, medium, and, and high. What do we give him? The full treatment. <laughs> Quick freeze him. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be cruel to let him linger, huh? <laughs> Here we go. What's that hissing? That's the cold air meeting his hot little body. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how are we going to know if this thing's working or not? Yeah, you keep your eye on Julius. If he turns blue, we'll know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Frankie, look. It's working. The yeah. wind is starting to frost up. Yeah, look at Julius. He's, he, he, he's taking his clothes off. He's taking his clothes off in a freezer? Hey, Frankie, you better get him out of there. That cold's affecting his brain. Yeah, get okay, him out. okay. Hey, Julius, you okay, kid? Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you guys? You off your rockers or something? What you trying to do? Cook me a little goose? Rattles got roasted in there. How can you get roasted in a freezer? This ain't no freezer. What are you talking about? I bought it from I.J. Grogan, and I know what I bought. Curly. When it comes to freezers, I know more than anybody else. Curly. I know that... What do you want? You may know what you're doing, but did you see the sign on the inside of your freezer? What sign? The one that says, this steam room is the property of the YMCA. Oh. <laughs> Folks, this is Phil again. It's not too late to join the March of Dimes. The little victims of polio have two strikes against them, but they're fighting hard. Don't let them strike out. Send your dimes and dollars to your local March of Dimes headquarters. Now hurry up and say goodnight, Alice, so I can listen to Hedda Hopper's program. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were Sheldon Leonard and Frank Nelson. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Now enjoy Hedda Hopper, then it's Gary Cooper on Theater Guild on NBC.